BC and around about the 5th. So it's an old story. And it's a story, when we look at Joseph, that is familiar to most of us who were sent to Sunday school as children or who have been regular churchgoers and students of the Bible. And I find that it's interesting that these stories can speak to, to people of any age. That for young children, the simplicity of these stories communicates great truths about God and walking with him. But even as, even as adults, the complexity of the topics that such stories raise means we can still study them over and over again throughout the years and still not get to exhaust everything there is to learn about them. Because they contain not just great theological truths, but they raise moral and ethical issues that we can ponder. And that's why Joseph is a very important figure in the book of Genesis. He was somebody who was hated by his brothers, unsurprisingly. His father acted foolish, that even though he, Jacob, was this man of God, we see the mistakes of the people of the Bible throughout the entirety of it, that God doesn't wallpaper over the cracks. And when we look at Jacob, here's a mistake that he gives Joseph this coat of many colours, which basically meant that he was the one to get all of the inheritance. Reuben was the firstborn son, but he ended up sleeping with one of his father's concubines. And so Jacob said, you will never get my inheritance. And so here he takes his youngest. You think it would go down to the second or the third or the fourth. But he doesn't. Because he favours Joseph, he totally bypasses the others. And we wonder why they hated Joseph. From a human point of you, as I say, we see the absolute folly of Jacob, his father. How would you feel if as an older child, or even the eldest who by tradition and right expected to inherit everything, your parents overlooked you and gave everything to a sibling below you? Think about the humanity of the story. How would that make you feel? Perhaps some of you might have had that experience, either as the favoured or the unfavoured. And it's no small surprise that his brothers hated Joseph. They resented him. They felt bitter. And to add fuel to the fire, he would go and tell tales on them. That's what you see here. He doesn't come across exactly as this shining, great human being. Somebody's going and telling tales on his siblings. Somebody who's showing off this coat. You can imagine him strutting around all prideful. Look at my coat. Look what... Our father has done for me. And then to add that, when he gets dreams, he rubs their noses in it. and says, God's told me I'm going to rule over you one day, that you're all going to bow down to me. Even mum and dad are going to bow down to me one day. No wonder that his father had to step in and rebuke him, even though he remembered the words that he spoke. And that's why it says that this is the account of Jacob, that Jacob is the one who was telling the story, which people recorded later on as part of our scripture. So one day Joseph is sent by his father to check that his brothers were okay as they were out grazing the flocks and they've moved on from that place so Joseph is directed by a man as to where they have gone. So he goes to look for them and they see him from afar off and they plan to kill him. They wanted to drown him in a well of water and they threw him down there while they decided what to do with him. As I say, think about this, my goodness. We watch some of these shows on television where we see dysfunctional families, some of these chat shows and whatever. You see more dysfunctional families in the Bible than anywhere else. And that is such an important point because can you see God in the midst of the dysfunctional situations you might find yourself in during your own life? Well, let me put it like this. Can you still trust God when your own coat of many colours has been torn from you and life has thrown you down a metaphorical well? And it's interesting that Reuben, the firstborn son of Leah, the one who should have got the inheritance, if you go on and read this chapter, which we will do in the next couple of weeks, that he tried to talk them out of it. Don't kill him. Don't hurt him. And it doesn't say where he went, but he had to go off on some sort of business. And when he comes back, 
he's realised that his brothers had sold Joseph into slavery. And so what did they do to the father they supposedly loved? They tore Joseph's coat up, they killed a goat, they dipped it in blood, and they went and told this totally false story to Jacob about what had happened to his son Joseph. And the Bible says it absolutely broke their father's heart. He never, ever recovered from it. If you go and carry on to read the rest of that book of Genesis. But this is a story we're looking at today about Joseph more than his father. Most people give up when life doesn't turn out the way they expect it to. Most people of faith get bitter and angry with life or God when suddenly they see themselves down the bottom of the well and they're looking up at it and they see the faces of hostility of the brothers who are supposed to look after him as the youngest, who are supposed to love him and supposed to care for him. And I wonder what might Joseph have felt as he sat down that well, staring up at the faces of his angry brothers. I don't think he was skipping around in faith. He said, I'm a man of God, everything's going to turn out all right. He was probably afraid. He was probably depressed. He was probably thinking, God, I thought you had this purpose for me. Yet what am I doing down this bottom of the well, looking up here at my brothers who throw me into it? Lord, it wasn't supposed to be like this. This is not how I'd seen my future, Lord. Have you ever had that experience yourself when life hasn't quite turned out the way you expected it would? And you find yourself down your own metaphorical well. Most of us have lived long enough to realise that life will make us bitter or it will make us better. And bitterness can be caused by either the things that happen to us or the things that we wanted to happen but they did not. And that was the cause of Joseph's brother's bitterness. They wanted their father to love them the same as he loved Joseph. And this man of God, Jacob, whom God used, he failed to do it, and he brought this massive dysfunction into his family that caused all of the problems that we actually see start to unfold over the next few chapters. And one of the great oddities of life is how amazingly paradoxical it can be. When we talk about being blessed by God, very seldom do we get blessings that don't bring their own pressures and so on with it. When we have these wonderful coats of many colours, when we say, look how God has blessed me, look, isn't isn't this nice and beautiful and richly ornamented? But the reality is that when God's word comes into our lives as Christians, it will actually disrupt some things. Because in the place where Joseph was, God couldn't use him. He was too arrogant. He was too self-opinionated. He was too thinking, I am a bee's knees as I strut about in my coat of many colours. In order for God to be able to use Joseph, he had to throw him down that well to humble him so he realised I need a huge change of attitude in my life if I'm going to see the purpose of God fulfilled. Growth is a part of of the life of every Christian believer. And one of the best ways to promote spiritual maturity, or one of the tools that God uses, is through adversity. That God sometimes will metaphorically throw us down a well to humble us. Because God cannot use arrogant people who think we are the ones who can do it. There are things the Bible tells us as God's people that we have to do And God will not do them for us. When you see in the Bible, it says this is your responsibility as the people of God. But likewise, there are some things that only God can do that we as people cannot. And it's when we get that balance right, when we humble ourselves and we realise, Lord, I understand the responsibilities you give us as your people. We will do them. But we also understand that there are only things that you can do that we cannot. And this brings me to the second point. 
every problem we experience as a Christian, as a person of faith, serves a higher purpose. That's not me who says that. That's what the Bible teaches us. And that's something we learn from the story of Joseph. And by faith, can you see it? Because faith is the currency of heaven. If I go into a shop in the town, I take my £10 note out and I give it to the person and I say, I would like to buy that to receive it. They'll take the £10 and they'll give it to me. The Bible teaches us that faith gives us access to the things of God, including understanding what our higher purpose for our life is. At the end of his life, and it's written in Hebrews 11.22, it says, By faith Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus from Egypt and gave instructions about his bones. But Joseph had to start his journey with God by staring down a well and looking up at the face of his angry brothers. There were lessons that Joseph had to learn It took him many years. He didn't learn all those lessons in the well. He didn't sit there cold, wet, and thinking, I've suddenly figured out everything God is doing for me. He didn't understand. I'm sure he was terrified. Can you imagine at 17 years old being sold into slavery? And unfortunately, that's an experience of far too many people in this world today. As we look at the problems that are happening I thank God that I've never been in that situation. But can you just imagine the fear and the terror, even if you have faith in God, of what you must experience? You see, the Bible doesn't say that we'll never have fear. What it says is that we are not driven by a spirit of fear. And those are two different things. There's difference between afraid of situations that happen to us and a a spirit, a, a spiritual attack of fear. But God has to humble us before he can use us for his highest purposes. And true blessing comes with humility. And then everything becomes our teacher. If we become arrogant, God will put us in positions to humble us. Not because he wants to destroy us, but he wants us to see that there are some things that only he can do. There will be times he will test us spiritually, emotionally, and sometimes physically. That he will put us in positions where those who should be protecting us will betray us, just like Joseph, that they will throw you down a well. And the question I'm asking you is, can you still see the purpose of God then? You see, when I go to some churches and I see people praying the blessings of God, it's fantastic that they do that. But, you know, we don't need that much faith when God is blessing us when we've literally got the blessings of heaven raining down upon us, and we think, isn't life great? Isn't it fantastic? Isn't my coat of many colours beautiful? Isn't God speaking to me through dreams and visions and so forth? Actually, it's when God throws us down the well, that's when we need faith. That's when we need to say, can I see what God is doing through me? And that's what we learn from Joseph. We see how this was part of God's plan all along. When his brothers came to him, he said those words to him. He said, you meant this for evil. When they came to him later at Pharaoh's palace, when, you know, after the famine and so forth. He said, you meant this for evil. He said, but God meant it for good. He could see a higher purpose through his life that doesn't justify what his brothers did. Their actions were evil. But God uses the actions of people, both evil and good, for all a part of his plan and a part of of his purpose and this is what we need to realize other people's opinions of you does not have to be your destiny what if joseph had given up down the bottom of that well oh my goodness the two dreams that god had given me about my brothers bowing down to me but here i am beneath them looking up as they stare down me with hostility and anger as i sit in the well Other people's opinion of us does not have to be our destiny. We can ask God to enable us to see the bigger picture of our own lives. And what I say this for you, if people steal your coat of many colours, God has a better coat for you. It's the coat of righteousness that he says we will be clothed in because of the faith we have in Christ. And that brings me to the third point. 
But God's blessings bring their own pressure. Can you actually stand to be blessed by God? You think of Joseph as a man blessed by God, what he had to, to go through. Sometimes you look like a cursed man. If you were walking down the street and you suddenly saw somebody sitting down a well, wouldn't you think, my goodness, that person's not in a good situation? You see, the blessings of God are not defined by external circumstances. God will spiritually, emotionally put pressure on those who really want to be used by him. Sometimes he will take the coat of many colours we strut about him and he will tear it up. He will take it away from us. And we find ourselves metaphorically sitting down the bottom of a well. Do we still want to serve him at times like that? Because I'm telling you this, and this is the important thing. If we do, the day will come when he will raise us up and he will make us even an advisor and a friend to the pharaohs of this world. That Joseph was made the advisor eventually, as we look at this story, he was made the advisor to the most powerful man in the ancient world. And this is what we see, that it was God's higher purpose he was focused on. So I say these things as we start to draw our reflections to a close. Don't pray for God to use you unless you're willing to be thrown down a well sometimes and for your coat of many colours to be torn apart. I'm sure our own coat of many colours is different for us all. For some of us it may be our arrogance, it may be our pride, it may be this or that. But if it's that which is stopping God from using us, and we're saying to the Lord, Lord, I want your will to be done. Lord, use me, use me. And we mean it from the bottom of our hearts. God will say, then I have to take away from you the things that are stopping me from using you. If you're prayed around in that coat of many colours, he'll rip it off, take it away from us. And when we're down at the bottom of the world and we start to look up to him, that's when he can start to use us. And we see this amazing story, how God did start to use him. How he ended up in a man's house who was good to him, Potiphar, who realised, I don't want to use this guy to be a slave labourer in the field. I let him come into my house. And he taught Joseph how an Egyptian household works. That was important. You see, God couldn't take him straight from the well to be in the advisor of Pharaoh. He had to first teach him. So he had to learn in Potiphar's house, being a slave there, he had to learn this is how an Egyptian house works. And it says that Potiphar gave him more and more responsibility because he could trust Joseph. And then one day, his wife looks at him. He's a handsome young fella. She makes a play for him. The poor boy's terrified, runs out screaming. She has his other coat in her hands, it says. And she's so angry and twisted that he's rejected her that she blames him when her husband comes home and says he tried to rape me. And then we see that Joseph finds himself in prison. He's gone from the well to a blessing where he learnt those lessons in the household of Potiphar and then he went from the household to a prison. Again, could he see the higher purpose of God? As we look at the rest of his story, we see that even there, he was of use to God. He said, I will even serve you here. And we just see how God all the way was preparing Joseph for that situation, that position that he had for him. So we'll say these things. When God elevated Joseph to the position he was eventually called to, he was not wearing a coat of many colours. He was wearing a coat of humility. That his brothers, when they came to him, and you'll see it, will look at it, the struggles he had. He didn't immediately jump up and say, I forgive you, I recognise you. It says that he went into a room by himself and cried. So you can see a man who was in great emotional distress, actually through this, but also a man who was trusting God every single step of the way. And to serve the purposes of God, we cannot wear with pride the beautiful cloaks of many colours that people will put on us. We cannot be the servants of other people's expectations. We can only be the servant of God and embrace whatever cloaks he wishes to give us. 
my final words this morning. What we can learn from Joseph is to maximise what God has given us. Wherever we find ourselves, in what a situation, we do not have to allow external circumstances to define who we were. In Potiphar's house, and then in the prison, and then eventually when elevated to Pharaoh's court, Joseph was never defined by external circumstances. That's not to say that he wasn't affected or bothered by them. Sometimes it must have been very emotionally distressing as we see for him, but they never defined exactly who he was. And what I say to you in these closing words are this. Your enemies do not have control over your future. Your boss at work does not have control over your future. Your family does not have control over your future. Not even you have control over your future. You don't know what life's going to throw at you or what's going to bring to you. But you can look to the one who has control over your future if you give it to him. The one who you say, your will be done, not my will. When you trust him and when you walk with him. Yeah, sometimes you may take our coats of many colours, but that's actually to put us into the place where he wants us to be. Joseph couldn't have gone from his father's household straight to the place where Pharaoh, he was used as Pharaoh's vizier and servant. He had to go through wells, he had to go through households, he had to go through prisons. He had to learn every single step of the way. But God had a strategy and a plan for Joseph's life. And it's the same for us. He has a strategy and a plan for you, for me, for this church. God knows what he's doing. If sometimes we feel like we're down a well, don't look up at the faces of the angry brothers and think, well, this is my destiny. Well, it just hasn't turned out right, has it? Have faith in God. Realise that he has a higher purpose for every single issue we go through. Life can make us bitter or it can make us better. Every circumstance can teach us Whenever we find ourselves in any circumstances, if we look to the word of God, sometimes we have to say to him, Lord, what can I learn from these circumstances? What do you need to teach me? And I think Joseph, down that well, he realised it's a cloak of humility I need to wear, not a cloak of many colours. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the honesty of the scriptures that here we see a family called by you a family used by you yet a family still with their own elements a dysfunction within them and yet Lord you use all things for our good as Paul wrote in that great chapter in his letter to the Roman church, that all things work for the good of those who believe and who love God. Help us realise, Lord, that the things happen to us that happen to us in life, they may be the result of external circumstances beyond our control. They may be because of the folly of our own decisions. They may be because of the decisions of others which we cannot control. But Lord, we can see, even in the midst of such events, that you have a higher purpose for us. So help us to trust you, Lord, if we're in our own metaphorical wells, if we're in households where we're being blessed, if we find ourselves in prisons unjustly accused, And when we find ourselves in positions of great responsibility where the fate of nations and empires rest on the decisions we have to make, help us, Lord, to realise we can trust you. In the name of Christ. Amen.